By now, I'm hoping that you have had a great experience putting on that travel mindset, looking through the lens of curiosity. In this lesson, we'll cover simplified approaches to finish the narrative of your experience. We'll consider editing, expanding, and embellishing our pages. And we'll add final touches to the cover and spine of your journal. I want to encourage you at this point to consider giving yourself the gift of time to process when you've gone out and about, whether it's, again, in your neighborhood or on a trip that takes you quite far away. Try to block out a little time on your calendar after you've returned so you can unpack not only your clothes, but the, pro but the ideas and some of these journal experiences. It's helpful to just take a look at, at some pretty simple layout ideas so that you can build your pages to a point of satisfaction. We're going to start by taking a look at what to do if you had sketched some things in a drawing pad or on a small piece of paper away from the actual journal. I've ripped out a couple of the images that I want to use because this Colorado Wyoming map is really inspiring me. I'm going to kind of fool around with what would work and I think I'd like to put this quick sketch that I did directly on the map. Now I could use a glue stick to glue that in, but just because it's fast and easy, I'm going to use the double stick tape. I'll set it in here. One thing that happens right away is that this provides contrast to all of the text and the color in the map. So that's something to consider when you're thinking about the composition of a page, is you do want something that is contrasting. It also brings a bit of surprise. When I open up the map, it's like, oh, there I've got something actually hand-drawn. It's not just the pre-printed map. I think I'm going to put some of these images of cows and cowboys on this page as well. This cow was done with the backside approach, so that works for animals as well as humans. I'll just attach it here and create a page that is fairly symmetrical with the two heads, the cowboy's head and the cow's head looking in opposite directions. Now I look at this spread and I think it still needs something to bring it together. So I'll finish the border on the right side by using the chalk application technique. I just love this. This will go over my drawings I'll show you just as well as on a blank page. So the chalk is really my first go-to material. I've got the chalk down. I can use my pencil eraser to add just a little more interesting element to this border. And I'll just use the straight lines going around. That seems to hold the page together a little in a little more interesting fashion. For this sketch that I had taken out, I think I'd like to just put that right on my tag. And there's nothing that says that it has to be the exact same size as the tag. I'm going to let him hang off. I'll attach it quickly with my double stick tape, but you could use your glue stick. And I'll put him on my tag journal. I really like the varied endings here so that not the, not everything ends right where the tag ends, where I've got some things dangling down. I think that is more interesting and satisfying. Another technique that can punch up a page and add some layers is working with paper called vellum. Vellum is slightly transparent, but it's very uh, reactive to anything moist. So it's a good idea not to add any watercolor or even use a glue stick on the vellum. The glue stick alone will cause the vellum to wrinkle a little bit. So I've cut a piece of vellum slightly smaller than this page. I'm going to attach that the best way that I can, which is with some decorative tape. I'll put the tape across the vellum. And then in order to make this work as a flap, I have to cut the tape at exactly the edge of the vellum. So I just give a little snip there and a little snip here so that the tape ends exactly where the edge of the vellum ends. Now I set it over the page, line it up where I'd like, press that decorative tape down. Again, I can stick some glue stick behind it so that that will stick a little better. 
and then go back to the very beginning where we talked about tabs. I might put a little tab here so that I remember that this is an interactive page. And now I really like that transparency and the layers that are created this way. I can lift the flap if I want to see what's underneath it and I can leave the flap over and that seems to bring that page together. Giving the layered illusion is also a great approach. Of course, I like richly layered pages and uh, lots of texture on, on my work, but here's another way that you can get that feeling of layers using my colored pencil again, and these are the petal rubbings that I did earlier. This was a rubbing actually from uh, some dill. So if you have some herbs in your backyard garden, put those down and try to do rubbings of those. I think you'll really enjoy that. To make this look more layered or three-dimensional, I can just simply take my pencil and work a shadow around the shape and then take my water chamber brush and bleed that out. I've got to get the water going a little bit. There we go. And I can bleed that out to create a fake shadow. That's going to make that appear as if it's floating a little bit. That gives that sense of layering. Okay, now's the time that we talk about the situation where you've worked and worked on a journal page and you're just not finding satisfaction. I've got a way for you to work through that and edit with something called black gesso. Black Gesso is a product made by any company that's working with acrylics. Golden is the brand, it's not the color. Gesso is spelled with a G, it's not pronounced gesso. They'll laugh at you if you ask for the gesso. It is gesso, it's an Italian word that means chalk. So this is an acrylic product with black pigment, so it's like black acrylic paint, but there's been some plaster of Paris added to it, that's the chalk element. Gesso originally came just in white and was used to prepare canvases or walls for additional painting. We're using gesso in our journal to edit in a really interesting visual way. When you're working with black gesso, please be careful. It stains everything. The first thing I've done is I put wax paper underneath both my pages. I've put on an apron and I have my paintbrush a plate so I can put my paintbrush on my plate and not get black gesso all over the table. You don't need a fancy paintbrush. This is just an inexpensive foam brush. Whatever you have at home is gonna work. So on these two pages from the coffee shop, I first caught bits and pieces of conversation. Since I'm gonna paint this out with my black gesso, I've taken a photograph with my cell phone camera. I've taken a photo of this conversation bits and pieces so that I can remember them and add them later. But what's kind of bugging me about this page is this poor guy sitting over here. I've sketched over him a couple of times. I've gone down a black hole. There's no way to get out of it. That's my main inspiration for using black gesso is this, this poor guy I'm gonna get rid of. But now that I'm looking at it, I'm not crazy about these two figures either. So I'm gonna just go ahead and apply my black gesso, painting it on like I paint anything. I can do a fairly thin coat. If you like the way that breaks up, it kind of gives a distressed layered look, leave it. It doesn't have to be filled in entirely. I go off the edge, that's why you have to have wax paper there. Here in Colorado, it will take maybe 20 or 30 minutes to dry, but if you're in an environment that's a lot more humid, give it a good hour or so and make sure it's completely dry before going back to work in the page. Here's the finished page with the black gesso. It's nice and dry. I've also started to work back into it with a gold gel pen. And I can start adding arrows and details and text, just reminding myself of my great experience having an hour to myself in a vibrant, exciting coffee shop near my home. I've started to put in the bits and pieces of conversation. That was kind of fun. Uh, these two were said by one person, so I'm changing out the color based on who said it, but you can just do whatever you'd like. And then you see how this corner was left sort of empty, so I just added a little bit of collage element there, a picture of their logo, just held on with two pieces of decorative tape. 
So the overall design of your pages and your book really connect into that narrative of your experience. Collage work can actually end up being challenging because it can be a jumble and kind of visually confusing. So let me show you a couple things that you can do to pull it all together. I'd love to share with you my New York City journal that I made with the paper bag and show you how I tried to pull things together even though so many different pieces and parts were put in here, which is a New York experience for me. I work with these broken lines, which are wonderful directional, almost arrows, to pull your eye through when the page, in this case, uh, it was kind of empty. So when the page needs a little something, I also worked in a memory map and used a symbol. That's not what a New York taxi actually looks like. So I just drew it from my imagination or what I would use as a symbol. So I started here um, putting in little bits of collage using my dotted line to bring the viewer's eye around. Oh, here's a vellum flap. This vellum was printed with a design. Here's a vellum flap, and this is where I put my itinerary. I had brought with me a lot of tags, so I used one tag just to write out the actual itinerary. And then I get some decorative arrows to help the eye move around. So if your collage pages don't look like they're holding together, try some broken lines to get the eye to move. Try some flourishes on your arrows. That will help pull the eye. Here's a drawing that I did in a separate, that separate sketchbook that was very discreet. So while I was sitting at lunch, I didn't feel like I was, it was really obvious that I was sitting and, and drawing and sketching. Here's the directional line to pull that together and the little flourish for an arrow. Now this page as a collage element was not holding together. So I added that directional line and the flourished arrow to show they served me a single pickle one night at dinner. That was pretty funny. And then same thing, I wanted this page to look like the other pages, so I continue on with that broken line moving through every element. Here's a little accordion fold, if you will, added to that map. And I wanted to point out that a lot of these sketches were done not on site, but when I got back to my hotel room, I put down things I had seen. So these are from memory. They're not realistic, obviously. But I look at this and just have to smile. This was a list I kept up under the heading of no kidding, New York City. And then the back is looking unfinished. So I think what I'd like to do here is add that compass rose. I'm going to just go around my tape circle to get it started. And I'll show my north. the south, east, and west. And then I might come in and just add some embellishment, make some thick and thin lines. And again, this is a gold gel pen. I'm working on a piece of black paper that I had pre-cut because I knew that would fit on the back of my journal. This has been glued down doesn't matter whether it was with glue stick or the double stick tape. I might add some more details on there, but I sure like the way that looks on the rest of this page. Now we're ready to talk about finishing our story. It's time to look at the container that we've been working in for this whole wonderful adventure. If your book has a spine like this, that actually is closed or has a, a linen backing like this, it's pretty easy to punch a hole through it with a simple push pin. So I've jammed that push pin right through to put a hole. It might be easier to get in there if you open the whole book, which gives you a bit of a gap between the text pages and that linen spine. Once you've got a hole in the spine, the sky's the limit. I'm putting in a very thin piece of wire and I can secure pretty much anything having this wire go through the spine. I could put on just some interesting yarn if you happen to have any laying around or if you found any on your trip by just attaching the yarn and twirling that wire around the yarn. 
Let's say you went someplace and had a memorable bottle of wine. Here's a way to attach the cork. So I can put a little hole into the cork with that same push pin. In this case, this cork for some reason had some holes in the bottom already, so I'm just gonna use those. This is an eye screw, which I start in one of those holes and simply screw down into the cork. It'll screw in easily. When it's in pretty far, you're good to go. Now you can attach that cork either to the wire or to whatever string or yarn you have hanging down. That's how I attached this cork in my New York City book. You can see I also threw on some beads and some other fun things that I found on the journey. Here's an example of a book where I poked some holes in, got my wire in, and was able to hang some beautiful beads and charms that I bought while I was on that trip. And here's one. I love the sound of this. Again, I poked the hole, I've stuck some wire through there, and I've used the tops, those uh, foil caps that go over the corks from the different wine bottles. Clanging together, they make a nice noise, and I purchased that little charm on the trip. So working on the spine is fun because when these books sit up on your shelf, there's a lovely three-dimensional textural quality that really attracts you. So now's the great time when you get to personalize your cover and let the cover tell a little hint of the story that we're gonna find on the pages within. Here's some fun techniques and tricks to use. On this book, I picked up, I know it seems a little goofy, but I picked up this beautiful piece of broken glass. I don't know why I liked it, but I thought that feather that we found in the park would look really good behind it. To attach this, I simply took a push pin and just went all the way through the cover. It's just cardboard, so a little pressure is needed, but it's pretty easy. And then I put some wire threaded through those holes, basically sewing that on to hold it in place. On the back side, where I twisted the wire and pushed it against the, the back of the cover, I just covered that up with another decorative piece of paper so it's not showing and, and looking a little awkward back there. So that's certainly an option. You can just go ahead and poke some holes right in the cover of your journal, use some wire to attach or hold on to some items. But there's another trick here. On this cover, I didn't want to go all the way through the cover because I had already started this book with a map. And I didn't want to break up my compass rose, which is over here. So I had this decorative collage paper I put holes in the paper first and then attached this kind of interesting button to the paper, again, with wire. So the wire is actually sitting between the decorative paper and the cover. Once I secured that wire, all I had to do was glue that paper onto the cover and it gives the illusion of having been attached all the way through. But then this side is nice and clean the way I wanted that. Let me show you how to do that. Here are some rusty items that I've collected on, on my travels. This one is the one that's most dimensional and heavy. So I'm going to attach that, setting it on a piece of decorative paper that I've pre-cut to fit that cover. Now all I have to do is poke some holes where I'm gonna want that wire to catch the item and hold it on nice and tight. Here's my decorative wire. This is pretty thin. There's no magic in, in what kind of wire you're using. It can be thicker, it can be pretty thin. You can also use that floss and a needle and just sew it with a needle and some embroidery floss. I just like the way the wire shines against such a rusty surface. So I'm gonna pull that down those two pieces of wire, those two ends. I'll continue doing that all the way around and this circle will hold on. I've secured the wire now in the back, twisted it off a few times and just kind of pressed it up against this paper. There you see that beautiful rusty item is hanging on nice and tight. It's going to be secure. The question is how do I attach this paper now to this cover? The best thing to use is a gel matte medium 
This too golden is the brand, it's not the color. This is basically acrylic paint without any pigment in it. So it has all the same properties as acrylic paint. It goes on wet, it dries uh, permanent, and this will dry clear. Even though it says matte, that just means the sheen. So when it dries, if a little oozes out, it's not gonna be shiny, so it'll be less obvious. But really, you could use any of the acrylic products to adhere this to the cover. I'm gonna take an inexpensive foam brush and put on that gel medium. Now, unlike the glue stick, it doesn't matter so much if there's a little air bubble, so you don't have to be quite as careful. And the other thing is, I'm going to use the brayer on this, and it's going to push that gel medium so that it comes out around the edges, holding it down. So I'm adding some gel medium, a little more than I know I need, just so that some will come out when I use the brayer. I'm flipping it over, setting it where I want it. And now I'm going to use the brayer, and it's going to cause that gel medium to ooze out just a little bit. And where it's popping up, I just hold it for a few seconds. That gives it a chance to adhere a little bit better. When the gel medium does ooze out, just simply wipe it off and put the excess on a paper towel. So I'm gonna to have to hold it just for a few seconds to make sure that it really adheres nice and tight. And again, if this, if any of it is seen after it dries, it will have dried with a matte sheen so it won't be very obvious. And there's no pigment in this so I'm not concerned about getting it on my skin and it will wash off your hands pretty quickly. Try not to get it on your clothes though because when this product dries, it will become permanent and you won't be able to get it off. Okay, so now my paper is adhered. I really like the way that looks and I love that contrast of the decorative wire against the rusty item. I love this piece. I felt like I really scored big time when I found that on the ground. Now I wanna add that. I could have sewn that on, but this is just as easy to add with the gel medium. It's fairly flat. So I'm gonna just go ahead and add some gel medium. I don't have to go clear to the ends, just a little bit in the middle is gonna hold it. I'll center that where I'd like it, press down. If any of it oozes out like it's doing there, I'll just wipe that off and it will dry clear and matte so you won't see it. Gel medium is the very best glue, second to glue stick when you're doing any journaling. You can attach things on the cover. It can be used for your pages, but I usually save it just for the cover. It's also great when you have something like my favorite items, these squished bottle caps. You notice on the back of the bottle cap here, it's kind of ridgy and there's some dimensionality. Well, the reason I like the gel medium is it will fill in those spaces and that's why I use this as opposed to any other kind of glue. And now that's ready to go. I think I will go ahead and put that right there. Press it down. If I leave that for a few hours, it's on forever. Finally, I'd like to show you this option. I'm really excited about this. I've started using my machine stitching on the map. Now, I know if you're a real sewer, which I'm not yet, um, you probably know about things that you can put on the back to make it easier to sew. I found that just doing two layers of this paper map was just fine on my machine. And I used that zigzag stitch going over the rat tail to create this swirl on top of the map of Manhattan. I want to attach this. Of course, I could use double stick tape. That'll work just fine and it does seem to last. But since I have the gel medium out and I really like this stuff, I'm just gonna paint the back with the gel medium I don't really care so much if the threads show. Remember that if I'm gonna use that gel medium with the, pray, with the brayer, I can just add a little extra so that it'll, the brayer will cause it to come to the edges. Place it on my cover. In this instance, I'm gonna just flip that cover open. This is the other advantage of using a spiral binding. I can flip that open, place it where I want, and just brayer away. I really like that hand stitching on top of the map. I think that's kind of a fun combination. Now I'm seeing that I need a little bit of glue between the two pages of the map. So I just take some of that gel medium, use that as my glue. I'm good to go. 
Would you like to see a finished journal at this point? This is from a trip I took with my family to Vienna and Barcelona, two wonderful places. We were there in December of 2015. I collaged this on the front from a set of magnets I found in a museum shop. I always like to start a travel book where I'm going on a dedicated trip. This is not one that I'm using to just wander around my neighborhood, but if I have a dedicated trip, I love to put a map in there, and then I use some broken directional lines just to remind me of the exact areas that we were visiting. I find that when I'm traveling, I always have that sort of wind tunnel the few days before I go. And I like to record those things in the, in the book. They do make me kind of look back and laugh at my own concerns. I was so concerned about a bunch of things that I made this little pop-up section just to have a place to hold those concerns and not obsess about them. So here we go. I started off, when I got home, I realized I needed a border. So I added that later when I got back home. Here is a two-sided element that I wanted to see both sides, so I put my decorative tape on both sides so that I could see the flip side. Here's some chalk I added after we got home. I did some quick sketching in pencil and then added the pen back at the hotel that night, and I had that small watercolor kit with me, so I was able to add that, and just a little bit of writing so it doesn't jump out on the page. Sometimes I like to record the purchases I made and the location. To draw this train, I didn't stand by the tracks and draw the actual train. When we got back to the hotel, I used my camera, my cell phone, and I looked up the train, saw a picture of it, and worked from that because it was an unusual uh, train in this area. Here's some background writing, not meant to jump out at you. If I wanted to, I could reread it. And here's the backside approach. There were a lot of people that were walking away from us with these fabulous fur hats. So I took out my phone, took a photo, and that night in the hotel, I drew these two people. On this page spread, I was not satisfied, and this was probably a week after the trip ended. I kept looking at this page and it was just giving me a little bit of a headache. So I brought out the black gesso, painted the background out, but I kept the vignettes. Here are those fur hats in Vienna. Not something you see often, certainly not in Denver, but I just did little vignettes of all the different fur hats we saw so I could remember them. I decided to use a black marker to go around some of these vignettes. This is just a simple collage uh, page. I did the writing on top of the brochures that I picked up. Uh, this was a little tricky, but I wanted to keep the map of where we were staying and the places we visited, so I did this big map glued it down on the two pages, and then just figured out a way to refold it so it would all fit in here. After I put it in, it was a bit flimsy, so I covered the back of the map with some uh, tape, simple tape, and then I wrote over it. This is just some duct tape, just to remind me that it's an interactive page and I can open the map. Oh man, this breakfast every single day was terrific. I decided to hold my book going a different direction to get the length of that column and the length of that palm tree, and then I added this little bit down here from one of the museums. This was a coffee spray. Okay, lunch really did take forever. My family was a bit grumpy. We don't have to go into that. Here's that map fold again, or the three-fold map. And I used the letter guide here to write our day tour. Here's the map I made from my memory. And this time, this is my itinerary. I didn't put the map here. I wanted to save the itinerary. So I used that three-fold pop-up to create that so it would fit on the page. This was pretty fun. I photocopied that, or excuse me, I printed that off from my home computer. And then I just did some designs on top of that to tie that into the page. And then I added this map from the place we visited. What was fun is that it looks like it just continues onto this flyer. You'll notice that I attached it with decorative tape. I didn't even have to glue anything. And then I just continued the drawings of those vines up here. This page brings back great memories. Here's the text band. And then I attached some things on top. Here's a map that I put in with a fold so I could get into that and look at it. Oh my gosh, this was really fun. This was our New Year's Eve menu. I put that in when I got home the week later. I added chalk. You can see how nicely that chalk works 
on that deckled edge. So I added the chalk. Oh, there's the letter guide writing. Here are stamps made from the corks that we had that evening. And they have a ritual of eating grapes. These don't look too grapish, but they look more like olives, I think. But the concept is there. You eat grapes at New Year's. We played a lot of cards. We didn't need the joker for the game we were playing, so I added that onto my page. And then I used the letter guides just to break up the text and make it more interesting. And then sadly, the trip ended with a bad cold. Oh well, sad way to end. Now as the trip winds down, my husband and I like to go back and review things and process and talk about the experience together. So I started lists. Here are the people we met. I wrote the names while we were sitting waiting for the plane, and later on when we got home, I added the chalk. The chalk on top of the text I think looks pretty good, and it punches up the page. Here are some of our favorite meals, our highlights we saw in Vienna, the Barcelona highlights, oh, and a scarf that I bought. I bought these shoes and that purse, and we reviewed our memorable desserts, both those that we actually ate and those that we were oogling over through the windows. I had taken pictures of them so I could work right from my phone camera sitting in the airport and I could get this poppy seed dumpling drawn and the apple strudel and this crazy seafood mousse. It was pretty good though. That's the end of my trip, the end of that journal. I hope you've had fun and been inspired to be mindful, playful, and meaningful. I'm sure your pages are expressive and reflecting your adventures and explorations. Please share your pictures and ask me questions. I really look forward to a continued dialogue. This was Expressive Pages Journaling Me Every Day. I'm Judith Cassell Mamet. Thank you for joining my journaling community.